And so what's coming, and this is what the rest of this talk is going to be about, is how do you take all the good stuff from rasterization and put it together with the good stuff from ray tracing and end up with an engine that's simpler and faster and easier to understand and where your artist can work four to five times faster, which is exactly the kind of speed ups that film saw. So it's production speed ups that we're really concerned about. It's okay to lose half a millisecond maybe if I can put twice as many, uh, get twice as much throughput out of my art team in the process. And we're gonna look at specific ones of these. Let me give you the, the high level strategy of what it means to embrace hybrid rendering. And we wanna get, get from a bug's life to something like Coco. And specifically, a bug's life had all of that kind of game-like technology in it with the shadow maps and the separate passes. Coco is just pure path tracing. They cast 64 samples for every pixel. Sometimes it scales up to 256, and that's it. There, there are no shadow maps, there's no separate lighting passes, it, it's just, this is all done in camera. And that gives you incredible workflow, but it also gives you the incredible visuals. So what you need to do is start redesigning now. You need to embrace rays now, so that just like programmable shading had this incredible performance curve, that's gonna happen again for rays, and you wanna be right in on the ground floor to ride that. And you need to think of rays as not just a VFX tweak for today's games, but a fundamental primitive throughout your pipeline. So the easy place to get started is, if you're already using ray tracing for physics, if you're already using ray tracing for baking, GPU accelerate that now. It's built right into DirectX. There's no reason not to put that right into your pipeline. And then start looking at those pain points. What are, what are the places where your artists are spending a lot of time tuning to work around the effects? So something like maybe screen space ray tracing for reflections, there's a really obvious transition from there to ray tracing. Maybe ambient occlusion where you're using screen space samples for visibility. Maybe that goes straight to ray tracing and it doesn't affect the rest of the pipeline right away. And then start thinking about as you go through all aspects of production, as you go through all aspects of re re revising your engine or your title, and think about where are places where we assumed it was raster? Where are places we assumed that if I'm scheduling a warp on a GPU, that the adjacent thread lanes are adjacent pixels. Because maybe that's not gonna be true in the future. Maybe you need different ways to think about what it means to have shading coherence or material coherence. How would you do filtering if you didn't have screen space derivatives inside of DirectX, if instead you have to do it based on a ray cone? And there are all these places where there are opportunities to sort of revisit what we've baked in and say it doesn't have to be that way. That was an artifact of a rasterization pipeline. In the long term is we think we're gonna end up basically where film is, with a different style of engine, but the same algorithm, which is full-blown path tracing. And that's gonna be made possible because of denoising technology. That's what took film down from thousands of samples per pixel to maybe hundreds to sometimes only tens of, of samples per pixel. That same technology is what enables real-time path tracing. So that's coming in a few years. We're gonna show you some of the first examples right here today. And start thinking about what that means for your engine. And the general hybrid uh, rendering strategy is straightforward. It's just think rays first. And the rays are really fast, but they're not free. So first you design your algorithm based around rays. You say, hey, a shadow is a place where I cast a ray and it can't hit the light. And then you step back and say, well, but I still have a lot of optimization I can bring in from raster kinds of techniques, from existing real-time rendering techniques. So maybe a shadow is a place where I cast the ray and it hits an occluder and, and so it's dark, but I don't have to cast rays everywhere. I can still use a shadow map to know when I'm fully in shadow or fully in light, and maybe I only need rays right at the transition region. And so I can take a few rays and get a lot more mileage out of them than just by brute force. And then the big take home is there are a lot of high level algorithms, especially in the last few years that have been developed. And I, I just heard today, thank you Natty, that Real Time Rendering 4 will be coming out. Um, so it's about 1,500 pages. And a lot of that stuff that's not going away because it's high level ideas. So things like processing in tiles, that's really a, a GPU operating system scheduling kind of idea. It's not inherently a rasterization idea. You can still use it. TAA, um, geometry streaming, occlusion calling, these are all compatible with ray tracing. So we can keep these kind of speed ups but then we can use rays to get the robustness and quality.